coming this afternoon on such a gorgeous day. Kind of tough to come inside, right? And um, hole up. I'm Loretta Swanson, and I am the Public Works Director for Mason County, and greatly appreciate your <coughs> time. And I am sorry to report that my Deputy Director, Richard Dickinson, is out today. He's the true brains of the operation and all of the detail man, but he um, is on bereavement leave, so. Lakeland Drive is looking nice, by the way. So Thank you. sweet. Yeah, there's, there's still more work to do in there, obviously, but we definitely wanted to get the steep slopes. Those were getting hammered the worst, and we've got some lids to raise on the sewer system, but yeah. Thank you. We Appreciate don't like it. that that much, but... Well, you know, <laughs> we'll talk we about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit today. Would they work? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so before we get going, any um, logistic questions or issues? Are we all good on time still? I know that sometimes travel up to the Bell Fair on Friday and in the afternoon might be challenging, but so far things are looking good travel-wise. Easy to so. go up, hard to come back. Yeah, exactly. So please, we're flexible. If you want to do something different in terms of how we go about business today, don't I'm hesitate. I'm good until 4.30, to... and we're ending in, a, in my hometown, so I think I'll make it. Perfect. All right. Everybody else all good, too, so far? Just have Oyster Fest waiting. I know. There's that, too. Should have had, We should have met right at Oyster Fest, right? We might not have left. And then please do help yourself to um, snacks, and um, we'll go from there. So I don't have a whole lot in terms of formal presentation this afternoon, but did want to just give a highlight and overview about our utilities. Mason County is not terribly unique from other counties in that we have a struggle operating our small private water sewer systems. And that struggle is typically associated with we've inherited systems that others were not able to take care of and so the systems were either um, basically run into the ground or folks didn't want to charge the right amount and then said, oh, here you go, county. So that's kind of the story with our, um, a couple of our smaller systems. But we also have new systems. We've got Belfair, and then we also have a larger system, which is the North Bay Reclamation System. So overall, we have... Um, three sewer systems that we operate, the Russellwood system, which we also have a water system that we operate in that same neighborhood. Fairly small neighborhood, small um, amount of rate payers, very limited, like zero opportunity, I would say, um, for growth or expansion. So we have what we have in terms of our customer and our rate base. And then we have the um, Beards Cove water system. That is all served by septic systems as well, so there's no, no associated sewer in that community. And that's a larger system, but has very limited opportunity for expansion as well. So it's a, an older subdivision that's been in existence for many years and just a few remaining undeveloped lots within that system um, to develop. We have the Belfair facility, the water reclamation facility, which you are probably quite familiar with, and we're very appreciative of legislative assistance in Belfair. It's been tremendously helpful. I also um, am very thankful, grateful towards the progressive thinking of the commission about how can we help ourselves get out of this financial challenge at Belfair. And so one of the, I think, key things is helping ourselves, right? We need to, we need to take some action. And commissioners did very proactive in looking at how do we maximize our urban growth area? How do we remove barriers for development? So our biggest issue in Belfair was that we've got this brand new, shiny, beautiful, multi-million dollar facility um, saying, come on, grow, grow, but they were not coming. And so we had just limited um, connections. And I'm 
happy to say that a lot of the actions that the commission has taken has opened up that door and removed barriers to growth, and we're seeing that pay off right now. Um, and again, thank you to the legislature. Thank you for your contributions as well. So there have been financial investments on the, the legislative side that's really helped us also. Um, so that leaves North Bay, the North Bay Water Reclamation Facility, and that primarily serves the Lakeland Village and the urban growth area of Allen. Although you might be surprised that <laughs> The, there's a pressure force main that goes all the way around the bay and over to the Victor community. And then also a little bit around the um, Sherwood Creek and Grapeview Loop, the north end of Grapeview Loop. So it's a very large service area. And this system actually has capacity both in terms of the facility itself but also geographically to expand and has been. So you all have seen what's been going on in Allen. Um, not only is Lakeland Village adding new divisions, but existing lots that are just above the, the shoreline have been um, being developed at a fairly rapid rate as well. So that, um, that system is in pretty good shape financially. There's a healthy reserve for the North Bay system, but the last time we looked at our general sewer plan, or facility plan, was the time it was written, 1994, <laughs> if you can imagine that. So we're currently working on updating that general sewer plan, and we already know of some capital needs and investments that have, have to happen within that system and we're certain that the, the facility plan will, will tell us more. Um, what else can I share with you? Commissioners, this past year, um, or year before, said take a hard look at our utility rates. So we have been on this path for a very long time of just simply increasing utility rates based on the CPIU. And this year, we took a look at what are the actual operating expenses, what's our debt, what's our future capital needs, what's our rate revenue, um, took a look at what the, um, the maximum tolerable rate is, if you will, based on a percent of the median household income of the communities that we serve. So we're wanting to kind of stay in that range and not strap our customers by exceeding that, that percent. Um, I'm sure you're familiar that we're uh, financially strapped as a community in general, right? We have um, other challenges <laughs> besides just utility rates, housing costs, transportation costs, um, all of those things add up. So that rate analysis has been completed, and we now need to go back out to the communities and, and share the results and our recommendations on what that looks like. And, um, and it also points out that if we want to stay within our targets of 2% of our median household income for utility rates for sewer and 25 for water, that we're gonna need some help. We're gonna need to go out and be more aggressive on our grants. We're going to need to be looking to secure outside revenue sources aside from just rates. So um, that's kind of the quickie high level <laughs> takeaways. And Mark, you've been yeah, I think tremendously the, helpful in the rate look and financial picture. I think that the thing that you guys do for us is give us the ability to collect and, and hold on to real estate excess taxes locally. So those are, are restricted uh, for use and, and that is definitely a, um, a source of funds that we've gone into and tapped to help us survive through lean times. Um, before growth occurred and when we had uh, pretty significant debt payments that we had to make, we've utilized REIT funds to help us do that. 0.09 sales tax, for rural sales tax money, super important. 
for a small county like us. Um, and, and that is also utilized in some of our utilities. It still has restrictions on it, um, but not as many as REIT. So it's important to have the flexibility in there. And then also pu funding the, the Public Works Trust Fund. I mean, that is, is a huge resource for us. Um, we were able to extend uh, a sewer line up in Belfair uh, into an undeveloped area that confident will attract development to come in because the barrier of developing that was that a developer would have had to come in and pay to actually have that sewer line extended. Um, and that can be a deterrent sometimes when they don't want to pay that much money to do that. Um, so hopefully this will help attract uh, development to that area. Uh, but, you know, having access to very low interest rate loans through the Public Works <coughs> Fund, essential for us. Um, the challenge that we have that, that, that Loretta talked about a little bit was these small utilities that we've assumed. You know, you got 144 rate payers um, and you're providing a utility service. If you have to do something that's, that's a, a big capital expense, how do you spread that over 144 people, right? Because those are the individuals that are getting it. They're kind of ran like a business, um, not for-profit business, but how do we cover our cost of business? Uh, and so that's where we have to get creative in terms of looking for under other funding sources. And, and Russellwood is, that's the 144 customers, right? Yes. And so Russellwood also has challenges um, with the older systems that are in place there. But whenever you go out and touch those things, I mean, you're talking tens, of th tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work that needs to be done. Trying to spread that over 144 people is tough. Uh, <laughs> And, and the rates that they pay now are, are reasonable rates, but uh, they have room for growth, but I, I think that it's a challenge in that area based on the median household incomes that we see out there too. Let's talk about North Bay for a second. Sure. How much is in that reserve? I believe about 2.3 million is okay. currently what's in the reserve. Okay, what's, what's the plan for that reserve? Is it for unforeseen cost maintenance? Planned capital maintenance, major maintenance work that we have to do. Yep. If I can, I'll jump in a little bit. There's also the aspect that it's at the end of its capabilities with the new constructions that are coming on. That it's, was my second question. I, is yeah. is it's it it's exceeding it, and we're going to have to look at some expansion. Now, currently, aside from what we did up in North Mason, currently the requirement is that they pay for their own infrastructure, but that doesn't mean they have to pay for the infrastructure for the facility, which that's what we're going to have to expand. The facility itself is close to its ability for well all can So the, <clears throat> not just settlement ponds, but the actual treatment of the water. Okay. And that it's modular enough to where we can add to that? They're or looking at that now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Belfort is modular enough to handle that, but it, it, it's got a spray field issue mm -hmm. where it don't have big enough price to fill but North for us we have to look at what all it would take to expand our system right and that's what we're currently just initiating is our general sewer facility plan update and looking at what new technologies could be utilized there's plenty of space up on top of the um, where the reclamation facility is located but um, it will likely be a different technology so we're confident we can do something within that space, but it's how much, what's the most cost-effective way to deal with it. Um, and Commissioner pointed out, so both Belfair and North Bay are um, a water rec reclaimed water facility, so Class A reclaim. We have a spray irrigation field at North Bay as well, so we're irrigating DNR trees up there and putting it to work. And then a portion of that reclaimed water, you may or may not know, was um, sold, if you will, as a credit to the port of Allen. So when they were withdrawing water for their, um, a new well there, we credited part of our reclaimed water within the watershed so that there was a, a balance. Yeah, it wasn't uh, the well itself. Uh, do you remember the expansion? We used to only have a couple hundred uh, the ability to, it was even less than a couple hundred hookups that we were allowed to. They had 20 years of trying to get it when it first came 
uh, port commissioner. We were stuck, and we were. I went to the county, before I was the county commissioner, and got them to give us outflow so that we could show that the stream would not be affected. And by them giving us outflow, the tribes everybody moved aside and let us have the water rights. So that's where all those water rights came from uh, in Allen, is from that action from the county signing those over. So back to your question about what what will we put all that money to work, the reserves for? So here's a, um, a spreadsheet showing what planned activities over the next 10 years would occur in North Bay. So we've got um, some things to replace, probes, screens on the facility itself. These are budgeted in next year's budget. Um, some programming upgrades, the engineering and facility report that we talked about, um, some effluent filter replacements we're going to be due to have that replaced here in a while. Richard, if he were here, he would describe them as just a big shag rug <laughs> that has finally reached its, its life expectancy. Um, and as Could Mark said, none of this stuff is cheap. It's usually proprietary, um, sole source, um, and the controls, they all have to talk to each other, so you're stuck with, you know, With the new sure. development in Allen, yes. below Lakeland Village, yep. did we do the same thing we did with Belfair, where we built the sewer before development? We did not. It was already existing? Yeah. Well, no, it was not existing. And I want to say that this is a little bit different in that um, the trunk was existing. So how you, what you connect into was in place and ready to roll. Okay. So the developer did essentially a side sewer and side connections to plug into that trunk. In Belfair, that trunk was not existing to serve that not large north, area. Yeah. yeah. So the trunk is what we constructed or are constructing at this time. And the developer up there developed and designed and constructed all of the side sewer and the collection that goes into that trunk. The developer up there that's using right now the expansion that we have developed and put in their own sewer system line too, their own trunk. Uh, it's what, what passed it is the trunk that we put in after the fact. Uh, but Lakeland Village, uh, did have residents at the time though when, when it was put in also. And Belfair did too. We were able to get 85% grant. Now this is before my time, but I studied it so much. We got 85% grant to build that system to put it through Belfair at the time because the government would grant for already existing hookups. They would not grant for speculation. So it all did exist and they put the pipes up there for them to hook on to because they already were there. But we never finished up the area like, because uh, you know Belfair and stuff too, like uh, River Hill or any of that. We never, yeah. that's where all the, in, in <laughs> Belfair, UJ, that's where the majority of the yeah. residents are. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And the resistance. And the, yes. <laughs> and the majority of the resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No, there was, <laughs> I was resist, I was resistant. <laughs> <laughs> So you were part with of the, the new development. You <laughs> with the new development, well, I mean, when you gotta all of a sudden pay five grand to, you know, to get a grinder pump and everything else, when your septic is perfectly fine, it kind of pisses you off, right? Sure. And so, um, <laughs> but for the good of the environment, <laughs> you would you would be saving the world. So with all the new development in in Allen. Yeah. How many more rate payers do you have now? Because, well, I live in Lakeland Village and my rate hasn't went down as a result of uh, making up a number, but what seems like 100 new potential rate payers. Sure, yeah. So there's new rate payers, there's um, contributions. They also pay a connection fee. Right. So that's the, that's the piece that goes towards our war chest here for future capital. Um, or leveraging additional grants for those future expansion sure. needs. What is the typical connection fee? So for um, our, oh, a connection fee? Mm -hmm. you, so in Belfair, it's 11400 now. Yeah. And then in um, North Bay, I want to say right around 6700 but 
I'll get you an exact. So that's for a new now. build, right? So if I come in and build a new home, I'm yes. going to pay $11,000 for a hiccup too. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. And then your monthly rate thereafter. Yes. Did, so the, the, the new housing, the multifamily housing up on the hill in Belfair, all of those, that probably is not per unit hookup, it would be per? 70%. 70, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, they're paid a lot then. They have. <laughs> they, they paid a lot. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, millions. <laughs> Part of the reason that Belfair is actually in really stable financial shape for the first time ever. Ever. Yeah. And um, it's why we had our state audit finding. It's because of, because of you the get growth. the hookups, yeah. yeah. You're able to that yes. one was dead off. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, you know, so the combination of the the financial policies that we we took action on and the growth, you know, combined to actually really turn the system around, which is has been a real real blessing for us. Oh yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, we went out with old debt and we 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 redid debt under a bank uh, with the ability to pay off early and everything else. So when you guys want to do what that. Uh, Kim Sheldon did and got it, get us uh, some money that we can pay off debt. Uh, we have no problems doing that without paying any type of extra fees this time. I'm <laughs> just saying. That's a. I think that's a. I think that's a thing for the Senate. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Where's Drew? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I. It's it's not just my frustration. These guys know. I mean, in Lakeland Village, we're paying over a hundred dollars. Well, 124? 120, 130 yep. in that yeah. range. Uh, you swipe your card, you pay an extra five, three to five bucks. <laughs> so you're really at 130 bucks for sewer. And um, you look at other places and it's, it's not that expensive. But um, so I know that that's a frustration in Allen and Lakeland Village. Um, and then I could almost hear the voices in my head oh, well, we have two and a half million in reserve. Right, we have all these new rate payers, but my rates are going up. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to the to the lay person, that doesn't make any sense, you yeah. know. And so I get that there's even just the Belfair sewer, there's a ton of costs, right? Uh, just like any of them, mm -hmm. um, to upkeep and uh, the screens, the the sprayers, whatever. Um, but I don't know if that's totally understood you know what that cost is across right. our community so we spend probably the three of us mostly well and you guys too but we spend a lot of time because we're right there we live there mm -hmm. so a lot of time trying to explain the the wow. different nuances sure and i think I'll, going out today and, and, and actually seeing it hands or you know Maybe not hands-on, but being able to see it. Don't, <laughs> let's not do hands-on. No but hands being on. able to see it will really help. Unfortunately, in understand. my other job, I saw North Bay uh, Reclamation Center a lot. Mm -hmm. Fire alarm activations. Oh. I was actually so I actually proposed that we start charging the county for responding because, yep. wow. So the sheriff's all right. Because because we charge we charge others who have such false, false alarms. Um, although we're we played well with each other, but something to throw out there in regards to what you're saying. Uh, I'm jump the ship because the commission has not made a decision, but the, the discussions of rates and things like that. Uh, if they, now understand, if, if we change uh, our rate system the way that I'm about to mention, we probably are gonna need some help because the only way to do it is to try and equalize it around everybody. There's a maximum cost of living amount that they can tolerate. Uh, if we were to do that, North Bay would actually go from 124 down to 110 and change if we were to uh, bring it back to that, that, that same level. And that would be the first time we've ever done anything like that in the county. But you got to understand, then you have a place like Russellwood, which is running backwards, that has the same thing that we'd have to do it on uh, to think about 2.5% for water and 2% uh, for sewer. We are going to go backwards and we have to find a way to, to make, that, uh, make up that money somehow. And I know everybody asks you for money. I'm just telling you that's what we're dealing with. But it would have an effect. If we're able to pull that off, it would have an effect where it makes all of them basically even. 
for the first time ever because that's what the, the uh, maximum amount is, the 2%. Mm -hmm. It would make Belfair have to go up. And I'm from there, and I thought, but I, it's only right. Uh, if we put the same tolerance for one, we should put the same tolerance for all, and some will get less, some have to pay more. But it's a pretty <coughs> fair way to go about it. Uh, and it would finally give you, a, in North Bay, a little bit of stability on how that's done instead of going uh, off of the CPI, which this year, if we hadn't stepped in, would have been how much? 9%? 9.1, yeah, I think. Can you imagine percent. that? That was automatic because that's what was established 20 years ago or, or, or further. There'd be more knocks on my door. Yes, there would. I don't send them to your house right now. <laughs> <but, yeah. laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm curious. I mean, but, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you know, here in the future, Belfair bypass, mm -hmm. right? Some limited access. Uh, I know, I think the sewer went up Romance Hill, right? And it'll go around that de new development in Belfair. It would have to go to the railroad tracks when we put a road in, but yes. Mm -hmm. It's there, it's all the way to the railroad tracks. So is there like a strategy to, a kind of a, a, for Belfair sewer, like an expansion strategy as things I don't know, maybe someone puts up a casino, right? Uh, and that's maybe technically in Kitsap County, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I can maybe... Well, do you want to have them take a look at that real fast? The, 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 oh, uh, sure. Yeah, sorry. Yes. The last... Uh, yeah. That screen right there shows you what the rates would be. So it, the... Um, so... Yeah, go for it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start with what shockers we were, were telling commissioners the rates really should be. This is what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, we're, we're realistic, but... <laughs> but I meant by our codes and everything else. Oh, no, this is by taking a look at what's our existing revenue, what are our existing expenses, what are our future capital needs, um, what does this rate need to look like to be able to be stable over the next few years and run this and be in compliance with permits and not run our system into the ground? So here we're saying, we'll, we'll talk about North Bay, that really we should do a 9% increase in North Bay. But... Now here's the here's the big but, <laughs> and here's what our 25, 23 rate is presently. If we use this two percent target of the median household income, this is what Commissioner Netherlands referring to. Really, our rate should be set at around one hundred and eleven dollars per ERU to stay within that target. And if we were to make this increase as recommended to be good stewards of our utilities, we're then putting the, um, the rate, the utility rate at 2.46% of the median household income. That's what this table is telling us. Um, and you can see, so in Belfair, holy moly, we're finally, <laughs> we're only looking at 4% there. This is really, truly, something to celebrate. And Russellwood Sewer, 9%. Here you see our, our poor little water systems, though. They have um, a huge need for an increase in rates. And the ones that are in black, so Belfair and Russellwood Water and Beards Cove, we've got room to actually make an increase and still be within the um, our target of the median household income percentage. The ones that are highlighted in red, if we were to follow our recommendation or what we, what we say we need to operate our utilities properly, we would be outside of that target. And here you can see Russellwood Water, um, it would be significantly outside that target. But Russellwood Sewer, eh, you know, close, but not quite. Same thing with North Bay. 
So that's that's what this, um, this well, table. It is might be outside the target, but what does it do to uh, keeping that fund whole for whatever? I mean, does it keep you? Can you absorb it and still be able to operate it? For the most part, we could still operate it, but what it does, you're kicking your capital improvements can down the road, and I have to be super thankful and grateful for commissioners to being very supportive about get some redundancy. We do not want to see another sewer overflow in Lakeland Village. We don't want to shut the lake down. Get out there. Get pumps replaced. Get two pumps in the lift stations. Get these system redundancies in place. So it's not happening. That's that's the challenge. You got to find that that sweet balance. Because if you don't do this, that's what's happening. And historically, we're, the only reason why we're making this is because we are putting it up from other pockets every year. Uh, as you know, for Belfair, we were doing, what was it, 880,000? No, it jumped up to 1.2 million that we offset it. Right. And that came out of our stuff that we should have been doing projects with. A reminder, the state law says that for the utilities, that the things that are covered in the utility rate is supposed to be maintenance, operation, debt repayment, and future present. Can't do it. So instead, we take the tax dollars from other individuals that don't live in Russellwood, for example, and put that money towards it because the only other option is their system collapses. And there's nothing, as she said, there's nothing much you can do in Russellwood because you have to remember the state law doesn't allow us to bring rural services or urban services to rural areas. So it's not like we can just create a new area for them to, to put the sewer out there. So Russellwood capital improvement that we was able, we were able to get done, yes. so that makes this red number a little less red? Oh, Is that what you're less. saying? <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You, yeah, you thank helped you. us actually, in my opinion, you helped us for over a couple year period. Now, don't get me wrong, we still got to put in another 100,000, we're talking about already, just to to have enough cushions that don't go backwards this year already. But imagine if that 300000 if it hadn't been. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. so, you, so I'll just say it again. Thank right. you. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> well, I, I don't want to talk for him, but I know Travis and I have prioritized um, those type of capital budget requests that are going to uh, have multipliers, uh, the multiplier for utilities, multiplier for any of those uh, developments. Sort of Economic things. development. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't super thrilled to put money into the dock at the Port of Allen, but we landed on that because it was a safety issue. Mm -hmm. And you got to tackle safety issues first. Sure. And, you know, but we had to pass up some other things we really wanted to invest in economic development wise mm -hmm. here in Shelton, you know, with the expansion with PUD3. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's in the future. But, uh, you know, like Dan said, that. That's our top focus. Mm -hmm. it, are we still um, using like all the 0.09 and re uh, tax dollars to service the debt on the Belfair sewer? No, we have. Oh. We're still using parts of it. Yes. We've never used all of it, but uh, because again, because the commission did something different that that's never been done before. In the old days, it was always simple. You went out for a bond. And with that bond, you had restrictions on whether you can pay it back, what you can do, and the, the rates were, were crazy high. We actually went and got rid of as much of that as we could, and we actually got an actual bank loan, uh, almost like a line of credit for some of it, at interest rates that were this much compared to this much. And we put all that debt in there. So by doing that, a lot of that debt just flat disappeared because, we, you know, you guys know, you guys do, do it all the time. Uh, when you're having to bond out your road projects, same thing, except for we jumped in front of them paid them down uh, and change the structure. So we actually did a little bit of both, but there's a little cushion there, but that's what's paying for all this. Mm -hmm. And Mark, in 20, is it? Seven. Seven, we will no longer be utilizing REIT and 09 funds. The board is, has not only helped with the operational side of those payments, but they've also taken money and put it away in a reserve line. So that in 2027, we can just extinguish the debt for welfare. And it's no longer a burden on the operational side. Thank you. That is a tall order. Yeah. Yeah. The, the challenge that we have, and, and, and this is the difficult thing to explain to, to customers and neighbors, uh, is that 
the operational cost of the utility is one thing, but those major issues that come up through, the, through a period of time. So as new people connect to the system, it's eating capacity. There's going to be a point in time where you no longer have any more capacity and now all of a sudden you have to add a new chamber to your, to your treatment side of your plant, which costs quite a bit of money. So in order to, to have those individuals that connect to the system pay for that future expansion, they put money into that reserve account. So when people say, gosh, why do you have $2 million sitting in there? It's because eventually we're going to have to expand that utility in order to serve these new folks as more people want to connect to it. And we don't want to go back to the existing customers yeah. and charge them, so we're going to use that money for that. And do fixes of things you would never imagine. This is actually, it's worse than what I'm about to show you. Uh, <laughs> this was from uh, 2022. The one we had in 23 was much worse. How much is the cost to, to do those tanks? Uh, How much does the cost you have for maintenance on Russell Woods tanks to clean them out? Oh, to clean the tank. Was that 300 to? That, yes, <laughs> at least. Like 300,000. This was their water. Hopefully they don't get this man out. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Is that disgusting? That is it, not something I'd want to drink. No. no. It's one of those call Mike Rowe jobs. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah you got it. Don't wash it. Your whites. Don't wash your whites. <laughs> yeah. 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 Use a lot of bleach if you're going to. I think he'd prefer to come back and do gooey ducks again. Now, that's not because we didn't do maintenance or anything wrong. But there's a magnesium, a of magnesium that goes into these tanks. And it may be at the bottom. We're hoping to be able to fix something with it this year. We tried. and We've done other things. We may even have to drill another well. We don't know what the final answer is. But these are some of the things, of course, we're going to talk to you about or ask you about. Uh, we were talking about maybe the idea of putting some things together this time. I'm wondering how you guys think about looking at it from that aspect of trying to fix some of these issues. But this is one I, 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 I called. Actually, I was ashamed. Actually, the 500000 that you <laughs> awarded us is exactly going to that type of solution That's right there. Yeah. So yeah, you, you imagine, guys are here, so give me a yeah. We are not confused, yeah. Casey. Imagine if you had, I, I don't know if any of you have like, um, like a pressure tank for a water system. And you know how every now and then you got to bleed the pressure tank off because some just silt and sediment and stuff gets in the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. Well, just imagine a much bigger <laughs> tank yeah. for our, our water system for Russellwood. Well, when you chlorinate the system, which we have to, um, that settles out manganese and iron. And so that stuff is settling down to the bottom of that giant storage tank. And then every now and then when you are doing a flush or there's something that um, affects the system, you get this burp, if you will, for lack of a better word, that's um, sending those sediments from the bottom out through the system. And of course, when you've just done your load of white laundry, that's the last thing you want to see. <laughs> it makes sense why you know we tied the rates to CPI, but it's also kind of unfortunate because as other people are being hammered by things like inflation and whatever else, yeah. so is the public works. So everyone's taking right. a hit together. Yes. Right. So it's like almost to the rate payer, it's 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 extra, but yeah. it's also what's needed to keep the cost of everything you know going. But on the rate increases, like the 9%, and mm -hmm. uh, on, on the right-hand side, I think, yeah, it's probably possible, like a lot of different, uh, like, rate payers at home can maybe absorb that a little bit. But I think one of the things I worry the most about is the extreme cost that can mean for our businesses mm -hmm. who have multiple ERUs. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking like our grocery stores. No, exactly right, Belfair. Um, you know, and th they're already strapped right now. Fuel costs, yep. supply chain issues, and, you know. Being sold. I mean. <laughs> QFCs. There was rumors, mm -hmm. you know, back in the early parts of the Belfair sewer when it was, you know, over a decade ago when it, it came in. There was businesses that moved out as it a result of the, uh, the cost, right? Mm -hmm. And. Part of the strategy, and correct me if I'm wrong, is in order to make this healthy and whole, you got to grow the pie, right? And you got to have development. Mm -hmm. But if you go too hard with the rate increase, do you hurt your overall strategy of mm -hmm. that 
extra economic development. You've got it. Sure. Again, that's, where yeah, the, well, that's exactly it. Again, what's funny is we ran against each other. He, he definitely knows the system because <laughs> you had to study it for all the debates. We had a bunch of discussions. I didn't know back anything before. back then. I just faked it till yeah. I <laughs> And that's something that commissioners are also always very mindful. What's that balance? So most of our systems are predominantly residential, obviously. Russellwood, 100%. Lakeland Village has a very, excuse me, um, North Bay has a relatively small commercial base compared to our um, residential base. But Belfair, it's a little different story. And we do have to be mindful about what that balance is in our, in our customer base. Yeah, and the economics of Lakeland Village versus Beards Cove, the socioeconomics is different. Right. Absolutely. Me and Dan can afford to pay 150 bucks, even though we don't like what? it. What? I'm on a fixed income. <laughs> so much. Sorry, our retirees on a well, fixed don't you income. Do you get the senior discount now? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. But in, I think the point is, is that in Beards Cove, we're talking a different kind of socioeconomic um, situation, yeah. right? Than yes. a lot of the people in Lakeland Village. Yeah. And so. And even worse for and, Russellwood. And that's you know, reflected there. So the census information, unfortunately, doesn't carve that out in Russellwood and acknowledge that. They are in the same um, income as everyone else, but Beards Cove, definitely, that, that census tract has, is carved out differently. But, you know, the so percents are big numbers, but then I'm just gonna put her back into a little bit of perspective. We're talking ten dollars a month. Two less lattes. Yeah, but that's that's probably one of the biggest yeah. challenges that we see because we watched a legislator in this last session say it's only nine dollars. Well, if you take all the nines and the tens, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is new, getting to be really a lot. Go buy new. You know, we have a the biggest transportation budget in the state's history, and we didn't raise taxes. But every fee that's associated with your car, Scott. I mean, I just got a new license plate yes. for my truck, and it was fifty-four dollars compared to seventeen. Yeah. You know, so that's the, you know, the big challenge that, you know, in the all, offices that we get, it's, bikes. you know, it's six here or seven there, and then all of a sudden it becomes hundreds. Yep. Yep. And, and Rob bulk. gets to do the God's work of responding to the bulk of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let me put it this way, because I always, I always disagree when I hear it put in that manner. You're talking for, for uh, North Bay, and not all of them on North Bay, because it goes down in other areas like... Uh, um, Little creek down there, Sherwood Creek and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. They can't afford fifteen hundred dollars a year. Right. Right. That's a lot per year. Yeah. No matter how you look at it, we can say it's just a ten dollar increase. It's fifteen hundred dollars a year to somebody that's maybe collecting for some of them, you know, twenty thousand or fourteen thousand a year total uh, on retirement. It, it would be a godsend to see anything go down. Yeah. Um, what people have not seen in Washington State is anything go down. Right. So if you did <coughs> increase the rate, uh, it's a one-time increase of 9% in that model, right? But then what after that? Is it We're state not there plan? yet, but I, my hope would be to keep within that structure of the 2%. That's what we're talking about. No, not based on CPI. No. That's what we do now. Okay. Yeah. That, that's what's led to the extremely high rate. Uh, and gotcha. another thing I want to throw out there for Belfair, one of the biggest problems, and Travis is aware of this, uh, Belfair's ERU is not the same as everybody, not all right. ERUs are equal. Right. Uh, when you go to Kitsap County and you have a 230 or to a 340 uh, gallon ERU, you hit, you hit Belfair and it's 165. Now there's different companies that say it's 135, but it was 165 when it was passed. Mm -hmm. But that's for that's only half of, of one, so you're, you're paying more and getting half the amount on a business. Now, on a resident, it is no difference at all. And ERU is an ERU. We don't count gallons on the residents. So they don't get hit that same way, but the business can get it. What governs the, I forget, what governs that ERU amount rate? for uh, it, the business? It was established by the commission that had been here before. Uh, in my opinion, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, biased. They needed to make up some money, as we all know. So what they did is, is 
started offering, uh, instead of the fun size bag of M&Ms uh, and charging you a dollar, they were going to give you the snack size bag and charge you a dollar this way and get more snack size bags. Yeah, gotcha. And that's why the ERU rate was set so small. They found a way to say, well, we have numbers that show that the Belfair water that a homeowner only uses 160 gallons, but that's, you, can, you know, what is it, uh, there's three kinds of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. You know, so. And I, I think the other thing that we've run into is we were doing the, the new design for the extension in Belfair and then also um, this rate analysis. is It's one thing to design based on a standard ERU, and it's another to set rates <laughs> on the ERU. Yeah. One, you want to be very conservative in terms of... Um, you're planning your capacity, so you want to make sure that you're designing and building for enough future capacity. But when you're considering what your rate revenue is, you want to be using the different yeah. number, so you're conservative in that regard and not and it was a different holding number. an they empty... They had a different number for construction, the RU. Exactly. By far. It was no comparison. Yeah. You mentioned you inherited Russell Wood at some point. Was that a private system then that ultimately the county took over? Is there any more private systems that are being looked at to be taken over? No. Okay. And so, thankfully, years ago, um, the legislature saw this as an issue, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, particularly for water systems, they set up this whole receivership, this whole program for um, private water system management and operation, and that has been fantastic. Um, PUDs have taken on that role as well, and here in Mason County, PUD1 is yeah. one of our uh, larger, as you know, water system operators. We still haven't gotten Kristen to bite on Beards Cove. But. I've been trying to talk her into the new Allen one. Yeah, the water. She uh, doesn't want that one either. We, we keep working her every chance well, so Who has Farstein Island now? I mean, that's still private, right? Because No, that, that's it's not still private. It is, it is private now. It was county. It was county. Oh, okay. Yes. We, well, okay. We, I wasn't here, but they allowed it to go private. Uh, they had a giant of a man. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, Everybody was terrified of him. He went in and, and he was legally, he would beat your rear end all up. And I remember the first time I saw him, oh, that's my little water system. It was like this skinny. And, you know, but man, I'll tell you what, he beat the heck out of everybody. Uh, the growth management board and everything. So the county, in order to get them off, said, yeah, you want it? You got that sewer. It's all you, the sewer, the water. And that's how they ended up with their own. And, and Beard's and Cove is the opposite. Beard's Cove now. was a collapse. Oh, yeah, they want us to fix it for They them. want us to yeah. fix it for them. Yeah. Oh, do they? <laughs> yes, they oh, do. Because Beard's Cove was a collapse, oh. and when they collapsed, we got it. Yeah. Because PUD didn't want it. They only wanted the, the, the producing ones. The ones that can actually sustain yeah. themselves. Uh -huh. so, the so, only thing, the, uh, not to be a, a, didn't know you know, a naysayer or anything of that nature, you know, again, you know, obviously you have to do what you're doing, we'll do, and I'm just here as a, you know, taking notes, but one of the things that we're also impacted by right now, too, in the community, because, you know, again, we do see a majority, we just had monumental property tax assessments, yep. you know, the, and we have, in the district, especially waterfront or close to waterfront people, a lot of retirees, you know, yep. are saying we're being taxed out of our houses now, because, I mean, some of the, you know, again, we don't know what that relates to taxes yet, right, mm -hmm. um, but we saw the assessments, um, you know, you saw areas, rural Tahuya, Haven Lake, that, you know, fortunately, they did go back and reassess. Um, but just be aware that that's, you know, that's a, Another. you know, probably in the last two months is probably the majority of emails that we're getting from our constituents. Well, because I'm a, a realtor, problem. I actually went up, I actually uh, I brought know. this stuff from uh, Collins Lake in that area. They were actually doing the same as if it was Wooten and stuff, which mm -hmm. you can't, you put yeah. a house for sale for Wooten, everybody in the world wants it because nothing goes for sale up there. It's yeah, and it, it was unique because we, we did a lot of work from our office and, and worked with, you know, again, nobody was at fault, you know, just a situation, you know, what was unique, they did go through and reassess, and a lot of people's assessments were actually came out less than their 23 assessments, and we're, now I'm trying to figure that out, so, like, you, know, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, there was properties that went up, as you know, because you saw some of them, we had properties in the Haven Lake area that went up, you know, 90%. Yeah. Wow. Now, just so you know, though, uh, now on the state level, it is your fault, so, <laughs> yes. but yeah. as for our level, uh, we haven't raised taxes in Mason County in right. years. So literally, yeah. <laughs> so no, literally in, in 2018, <laughs> no, 2017, you paid $1.36 per thousand. In 2022, 
you paid 81 cents per thousand. So your amount you pay for the county just keeps getting lower and lower. I'm expecting it to be about 74 cents next year because I don't think we're going to raise taxes again this year. We're so not real popular down at the state association of counties because we don't take our right. constitutional we're not. 1%. Yeah. We're not. So yeah. Not at all. We're not because that, all. That, that, that their argument then that they need a 4% lift is defeated, Kevin. It is. No, because for them, uh, it's true. They do because they just spend the hell out of it. They, well, <laughs> the, so the amount of papers I carry is in direct correlation with the size of my, my briefcase. We represent three counties, as you well know, and all of them want capital budget requests. We give two other counties capital budget requests that generally puts them more in debt. Um, you guys don't do that with it. Um, and that is... Awesome. As a basic county resident, I mean, yeah. I wish more of them would do that. You know, this is one-time monies from all of Washingtonians to say we're going to get you out of a bad way, and you guys have leveraged it well, which I'm happy and proud of. Even when we do our budget, we fall, we say one-time expenditure, one-time. That's the difference between having a bow wave, and we pay attention between the two, yeah. knowing what we're doing for the future and what we're doing for today to keep down our doors. So. so, is is there any uh, ask going into the next session or the session after? And the only reason I, I say that is because the earlier, the better, mm -hmm. you know, getting us a list of priorities, you know, so we can work those things out. Um, we hope to have that, that to you. Uh, especially next session where it's like, if you don't have it before the session starts, you're toast. Yeah. You're done. Well, something yeah. the commission had talked about was looking at ways to help the, the county as a whole instead of just one particular uh, individual unit. So coming to you with a request that will have an impact for all the utilities or the things that are most needed in the utilities as a package, but nobody's has that together yet. It's just ways that we're doing to try and keep all the costs down to have the greatest effect with any dollar that you provide for us uh, so that we can keep rates down for them. But it takes a process to know exactly what that's going to be. For example, that water, we've got to pay for it one way or another, so it's going to affect rates or because it's supposed to stand on its own. I'm not sure if this is off, off topic or not, but maybe not. How does this um, new initiative for like the Ignite Mason County, how does that help you at all, if at all? Yeah, so part of it, so it's um, if we get it, if we're successful. Right. So there's it's two phases. The first phase is a, um, a strategy development grant, which is about $500,000 that allows us to kind of further develop a, the full recompete um, implementation grant, but <clears throat> it wouldn't help the county uh, with you know necessarily with something like Russellwood or or Beards Cove or North Bay. But the project partners took their highest priority infrastructure projects and put them into the into the plan. So you know, looking at how we develop out infrastructure uh, at Sanderson Field, uh, looking at how we develop out infrastructure at uh, along Johns Prairie, like in the area of PUD3, those kinds of things. Looking at uh, how we would expand um, the facility at, at Belfair to yes. accommodate you know, future growth five, 10 plus years down the road. And so overall, it's about a $58 million project that has uh, traditional infrastructure like that in it, but it also has a large workforce development component to it where um, our three secondary school districts, North Mason, Shelton, Mary M. Knight, um, are putting together uh, career and technical education pathways so that they get their students, their their high school students, uh, out into the workforce, um, you know, and have those sort of those skills that we know are critical to keeping a job, like showing up on time and um, you know being responsible and dressing appropriately and things like that. But also working with Olympic College to develop um, apprenticeship programs, partner with Puget Sound Naval Shipyard to to get more of our eligible workforce connected with those programs and so it's a it's kind of a mixture of infrastructure and workforce projects and that's the way that recompete was designed um, it wasn't just intended to be a you know true hard infrastructure project or a, you know yeah. funding but it's a it's a mix of things so um, question I have is and thank you for um, asking the question. For the Kansas 2023 legislative priorities, we had a couple of things on there for North Bay Case Inlet for the, um, the facility plan control updates. That was 655000 mm -hmm. And then for Beards Cove, um, the utility valve replacement, that was 150000 
are those issues still um, active? Or do you still need that? And are there other things that you're contemplating on top of that then? We could be. So we've funded the bulk of that through either ARPA, our budget request. So, you know, we're, we intend to help ourselves. Well, let's talk about that uh, North Bay request. How much was that, Deb? Uh, that was 655000 and what was exactly, is that for some of the capital yes. costs? Yes. So, and I'll be, I can be convinced the other way, but my baseline thought is, if you uh, raise the rates 9%, I don't want to do that. But if you raise the rates 2% and you need the help because you kept it low, then I would be more amenable to that. And with that argument, I will be fighting for the 2%. <laughs> <laughs> well, well no, if you're, I, I love that. It, Can you keep saying it again? Well, say it again well, and, and here's the thing. If, if you've raised rates to help stack up your capital fund, mm -hmm. then why does the state of Washington have to give you more money for capital funds? Mm -hmm. But if you've kept them low to help people out in a hard economic time, and that makes you suffer with your capital funds, then it's more of a relief to help you out. And by helping you out, we're helping our constituents. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's a, a great argument. <laughs> but there's a direct correlation to that. Right? Mm -hmm. So within those rate structures that were built, included those capital outlays that were necessary. If you pull those capital outlays out, then absolutely it can help keep that rate low. Because yeah. I don't have to make, I don't have to, to accumulate anything. Right? Well, and let's. The, our, uh, we don't even know what our capital budget capacity is going to be, so I, we can't do anything close to guaranteeing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if this is something that could be stretched over a two or, th two or three year window, right? Yes. If it's not an immediate thing, yes. I would say that is a amount of money that would be not easy, but can be attained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's, that's the whole idea, is smoothing the rate impact. So we're looking at the shock of we've used the CPIU year after year after year, and then um, we're maybe forgetting that it's like 1% prior years or less than that before. So by following the CPIU, we're not necessarily taking increases that would keep up with labor costs, with material costs, with all of those other things that continue to rise at more than... DOT tells me that every day, <laughs> so I get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's, that's the challenge. And then now we're playing catch up because we weren't... And I think from a ratepayer perspective, a ratepayer would rather have something predictable, right? Like a 2% rather than 0.19. <laughs> and like I said, I could be I could be talk talked to about it, but and and that was just my opinion. That's not Dan's no, but opinion. Travis, but in order for us to do that, we almost have to have a belief that we money. You know, the debts and the needs don't disappear. We got to find some way to do it. We almost have to have a belief that we're going to be able to go out and find some other help. As you've seen in Mason County, we don't mind helping ourselves. We're only Mason County. We need more. We need a whole family to help. Uh, if we go down with those rates, that's kind of the thing we're selling to ourselves is we have the ability to try and find other funds. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know in my 10 years here that I've ever turned down a capital budget request that these kinds ever asked me. The only thing I've had a problem with is you asked me way too late. And if you ask me earlier, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So what, what what's your way too late. So, if we so were to you can't last, ask me in January for capital session, budget requests. Last it, session it, can't it was it was during the it was it was some it was like late January, early February, something like I can't re exactly remember, but that's almost too late because we've already started building some priorities mm -hmm. and making commitments ahead of that. Yeah. It has to be before the session, preferably the early the earlier the better, you know. So we can help you if we like before assembly days in December. Month. Yeah, if you guys get our, the requests early, we'll get them in. And if we run the requests twice, um, the capital budget team always sees it. Oh, they asked for this, tw you know, so maybe we don't get the 600 next year. Yeah, send me 50 capital budget requests. I'll run all 50 of them. So but at the, the end, I'll have a chunk of money that I have to 
pare down my list of priorities. Sure, right. So yeah. when does the form come out? Because I know, I know as, as an LA, I would get so frustrated because we'd have all these people asking for capital budget requests, but the forms were not released. You, by it was like mid-January, but now, but now it's late. not a form. Well, <laughs> there is a form, but there's also a portal. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, so uh, I think their commitment is yeah. to have it up and running by the 1st of December this year. Okay. So if awesome. so, if you get it um, all ready to go early and get ready to, you know, any, if you filled out those capital budget forms, you can see they're not hard. They're not like a grant. So, so Kristen, PUD1, yeah. she got everything she asked for. She asked us in November. Yep. And she had already everything re, uh, written out with the cost, the explanation, and all she had to do was copy paste yeah, into the up. form when once it was available. And but she got all 1.5 million or so dollars worth of her three projects yeah. that were all under threat. I've so been you're doing saying this for 11 years now. I'm in my 11th year, and I've never heard this before. So I'm very appreciative that you guys Well, we've it. said it like maybe, I don't know why I told you personally, but I probably said it 100,000 times. I need EDC to get together and their ass quicker. I need the judges to get their ass quicker. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they'll come right down to January 1 when I'm going 100,000 miles an hour trying to keep up with what's going on in Olympia. And now you want a bill. I'm like, I don't know if our staff even has capacity now, but I'll try. PUD3 had an important... Um, um, substation you know chunk of money for design work yes. and that's critical to some new economic yes. development but they asked me a week before the cutoff mm -hmm. and by that time the cake is already baking yeah. you know you can't add ingredients while you're in the oven <laughs> and so, um, well, so that's good. And, I mean, we've said so. that at the chamber and uh, our legislative wrap-ups and we'll continue to say it to the EDC and everyone else that the earlier the better that's we how we could best help you. Well, well and, I think yeah. makes it makes kind of sense loud and clear right that's now. That's why we're right. here all in October. October. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the point, I think the point of this is so that you walk out of here with. <laughs> we we really continuously tell them that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's, she's been very yeah. good about it. And you walk, you walk out of here with a good understanding that, first off, our priorities haven't really shifted in the past year. So, in, in large part, we're going to be teeing up the same projects we asked you for last year. Um, and so it's, it's, it's not going to be very different than that. And so the goal today is to walk through, look, we're, we hear the same things that you do on, on rates and the challenges that people are facing. We live in the economy too. We're not immune to any of this. And so that's, we were responsive to that and didn't increase anybody's rates to the extent that the CPI and our code wanted it to. We changed our code last year with the expectation that our staff was going to go do a rate analysis. And that's how we got the information that we're sharing with you today, that we're still going to take out to the public to have additional outreach and educational opportunities with them. So we are responsive to, to these things. We don't live in a bubble, and we're just yeah. trying to put things together. You know, And it's just like, totally hear you loud and clear on getting these requests in at, you know, so that you guys can be effective with them. We, we want that. And that's why Deb has been super helpful in keeping us engaged and getting this on the books today so that, you know, we can have this conversation, show you what we've been working on. And then, you know, we don't we're kind of hear a little bit longer than probably we intended to be, but, you know, get out and see the systems and, you know, just put your eyes on it and see kind of, you know, what the operations are like and that kind of thing. Well, so. and last thing, please prioritize. Like, um, you know, there could be a aspirational goals that is going to be more future capital. Um, we need to know that. Like, what what is uh, like immediate and we got to like put all our eggs into one basket that helps us too mm -hmm. um, and I think one thing that we we, we don't want to do is play you guys against each other either well that won't we work can't. Yeah. Say you yeah. can't. We can't. I, I, if I it, it won't work I want you, you would fail <laughs> so it, it just others, is, others come in as a team. <laughs> and as a reminder to that though too because the house does have a portal and we I was just told last week we're expecting somewhere around December 5th that Supposedly, we were supposed to get around committee days. Yeah. Um, that we should get the forms. The Senate is still, it's just the, the legislator that actually runs that, the operations budgets, he, the capital budget, still wants it hard copy. Um, so, and it creates a real problem, actually, because they, they have to transcribe everything into a Word doc or into an Excel form. So, when you do submit those, make sure they come, you know, obviously to Senator McEwen's office. And then trust that we work really close together. Oh, yeah. They, they I mean, Super close together yes. on, to make sure that 
goes forward. Yeah, the, one, ha the house is definitely uh, has a better system, a, a system and an organization, and then we got to go actually fight in the Senate. They're <laughs> like, "Here's your money. I, I, <laughs> go spend it somewhere." I, I don't really even touch it anymore. It used to be I get some chicken scratch written on a piece of paper and signed, <laughs> and then my assistant would type in a bunch of stuff and make sure you get your capital budget request. It is all on the requester now, mm -hmm. at, and at least on the House side. Yeah. So the requester fills out, I think what I've told is the easiest form you'll ever fill out oh, to ask is. for cash. It is. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just got to get done early. Simple. I got somebody up in Kitsap County in Seabeck area that is just all kinds of mad at me. And I, I said, you did exactly what I told you not to do. I asked you to correct it. I couldn't get a hold of you, and I had to submit the budget. And I'm sorry you didn't get it, but you asked for a million and a half dollars when I told you you couldn't have a million and a half dollars for that project. So yeah. my takeaway from this is, uh, which I didn't know, Dr. Lee, we need to come together as fast as we can to give it into Deb's hands so she can hit you all verbally, then hit you again uh, uh, with paperwork, and then hit you again verbally. And then, uh, yeah, and Deb almost has yeah. her own little office in my office <laughs> <laughs> because she does Thurston County as well. well. I, don't want, <laughs> I don't want to talk about anything negative, but one thing that's happened, and has happened at least a couple times in my tenure, is we'll get a capital budget request from Mason County Sheriff's Office, and then we'll get a big capital budget request from Mason County, and then we get uh, like an EDC request. Here's the deal, I, I really want us to convene, <laughs> get together, and I've asked uh, maybe the EDC be the host or whoever, but let's prioritize our asks for our county and we can then number them. And those numbers could be based on you know, performance uh, as far as other grants and that sort of thing. We gotta get together. But when we get all of the requests, it is really hard for me to put all of them together to benefit one county mm -hmm. um, and get almost any of them. And, and I'll just take on to that and say, we got a very large, expansive size of Rhode Island, rural county with a lot of different infrastructure needs and everything else. And so, yeah, we do spread some money to Kitsap and Thurston County as well. But the difference with Mason, obviously, is we're the only legislators you have. Mm -hmm. You know, those other counties can pull from a couple different districts mm -hmm. for, for cash or from the state itself or from different funds, right? And so we do pay extra special attention to getting Mason what it needs, because if we don't, then you won't get anything. Uh, you can't go somewhere else, really. Well, maybe you could, but you might not get it, <laughs> right? And we, um, and quite frankly, we don't do a lot of capital budget requests for the, our other counties, because they generally rely on the majority party members, and mm -hmm. okay, that makes sense. But we've been pretty effectual in the capital budget requests that we have made. Um, anyway, enough yeah, of that. And we have, um, I mean, we got more of a bigger chunk of rural Thurston County now and a little bit less of Kitsap than before. A lot of the capital budget money will go into like Bremerton, Port Orchard, Silverdale, the cities mm -hmm. um, in Thurston County, more in the Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater area. Uh, but we have a few in Rochester and Tenino, stuff like that. Um, but uh, it doesn't, those are, I don't wanna call them vanity, more community projects. Um, Whereas in Mason, it's definitely more economic development infrastructure help, right? And that's what kind of I've been trying to prioritize. Safety, obviously, if that's an issue, but then economic development and infrastructure so we can have more housing so my kids don't have to leave here uh, because they can't afford it someday, right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, Wait. I can beat a dead horse, so I'll stop. So this was all utility focused today, but um, just a quick question on infrastructure and transportation. So we have needs. Our, our intersection improvement projects are a much higher priority than DOTs. <laughs> and when I say our, like we prioritize DOT intersections higher than they do. Um, and so are those still good projects from your perspective? And are we going about that all wrong? Like we would need to be the developer sponsor to accelerate intersection improvements that DOT should be initiating. Well, I mean, uh, give me your position paper on that and I will go arm wrestle DOT, right? If it's their responsibility, I'm gonna make them pay for it. A lot of times they told me it wasn't their responsibility and they lost the argument. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fine with me, but um, your projects, I rated high to me on the transportation committee. I, I think they, they were very well thought of and necessary. Mm -hmm. um, 
I need to know the priority one. Like if we're gonna, what we yeah. gotta do is put our eggs in a basket. Yes. Okay. If we're, so is John's Ferry our priority one? Okay, if that is, you know, I got some work that I'm doing in, in Allen because we're, we are gonna get a bypass, by gosh, it's going to happen, right? We're gonna speed traffic uh, quicker uh, through and then we're gonna uh, make sure people in Allen can't ever get out of their driveways, right? So what are we doing to think about that? I have DOT working on uh, a re at least one roundabout solution. Perfect. Uh, there, um, you know, I really want it to be a Lakeland Drive, but maybe it would be smarter if we killed two birds with one stone and fixed our 302 conundrum and Highway 3 conundrum at the same time. Um, but how many people does that uh, benefit as far as being able to move traffic and that kind of thing? Um, they're, they're doing an overlay on both spots. They're going to do an overlay there at Lakeland Drive and one there at 302 and, and uh, uh, whatever the dirt road is. But, you know, I have, I have something to throw out. Uh, uh, the commission just had a retreat. And in that retreat, we just had a discussion with staff directing them to go forward to establish, to put us the tools together to establish a road improvement district with the folks at Razor Road. Now, you were actually were part of that conversation years ago yeah. about the response time. We are kind of prioritizing that, and now if that happens, uh, and we were able to work with the state, especially for access on that, you already know that can alleviate traffic around for those that are going into the basin. Oh, I got all you, kinds of ideas about how we could, we yeah. could work with the state and move our traffic mm -hmm. a lot better. Well, we just yeah. put together, uh, and the, the commission just I don't want to say commanded or what. I just don't have the right Directed. word for it. Directed staff <laughs> said, "Go to, to work." Put together to, to <laughs> go to work, Swanson. <laughs> they already have, they already have a, a road district there, as you know, where they pay for their own road. The, the money's been stolen, like you know, at least three times in the last four years. Yeah. Uh, if we were to do this, we'd be able to put a road improvement district that would take their money for the next 20 years and actually put it to to pave in it. So we have that much money. We have some money uh, from ourselves. If we can partner with the state, we actually could maybe. Pull this thing off sooner rather than later, and imagine how that would alleviate traffic in Allen. Oh, I think it'd be it would help a lot. I really do. Um, and we and we need it. And it, so I got a lot of ideas about it. You and I talked yes. for a long time about that, right? Um, uh, but pick a project, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. put it at the top priority, and 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 I will continue to send it as a member request project for DOT. So it'll be DOT doing it yeah. for the mm -hmm. county. Um, and and I think the DOT well. The town of Allen, um, we've, um, DOT didn't know this, but I went to, to the project engineer and I wanted to evaluate sidewalks and stormwater collection. And they're like, what do you want sidewalks for? Well, because it gives you a curb so you can collect stormwater. Well, uh, their stormwater is completely failing in the town of Allen, right? I mean, completely. DOT stormwater is still using wooden um, uh, drainage pipes and they're, fa they're failing in many places. So it's their responsibility, but they didn't know they didn't own the right of way. So right now, the property owner's right of way goes to almost the center line of Highway Three. So Highway, so DOT actually has some requirements they're going to have to do. They just want to ignore it long enough to to shut me up, but I can't <laughs> be shut up. We can take those weaknesses that have and use them to our advantage, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, pick one. If Johns Prairie is it. Okay, or if another connector is it, okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the easiest way for me to move things. And member projects in DOT are tough to come by because our gas tax compression is is real. Sure. One other thing I'll mention just really quickly is that you know, I'm on appropriations and I have the ability to run budget provisos. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, obviously, capital budget stuff's a little friendlier. You get more of what you're asking for as long as it's within a certain capacity, right? But uh, I want Mason County almost half a million dollars in budget provisos for early learning, um, um, and then also uh, some money for um, equine therapy for veterans and all sorts of stuff. So, give you six, ten years, then what would you do? And we can do that from our office too, because yeah. Senator McKinnon did it for Turning Point to get you know Turning Point and some of the yeah. others to the yes. youth connection, which you both did. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. Band music center. Point. That's what I was. Thinking. A, a, proviso, a proviso for a study. That was the. <laughs> 
So right. do you want to time to check here? Yeah, we've we've blown some good Actually, time. Actually, I think this was. So <laughs> I, I may not be able to make it out to see. all the, but I think it was absolutely agree. I think oh, it's yeah. a great discussion to have. So. Well, let's just stay close. I mean, you, I'm easy. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll my phone and I'll answer. <laughs> well, I can see where we connect. I can see how we can make things even better with our relationship with what we're doing and get more online on how to get it done. I consider that successful. I appreciate your time that you gave us and the education I just received. Well, I, and I, I on the also, Allen I piece, it. we've got a transportation plan specific to Allen that addresses DOT right away. So if that's of any assistance, well, I need that the we help. Can because <laughs> uh, also you guys own some property that I think we're going to put need to put a settlement pond on, right? So we're going to have to partner if we do this, right? Mm -hmm. the, do you, I don't want the DOT to have to go in and condemn waterfront yeah. property in Allen. They'll lynch me. But if there yeah. is, yeah. you know, and I don't want to condemn property if I don't have to either. If we can work as a team mm -hmm. and we can understand that cleaner water going into the North Bay is good for all of us, but also um, uh, managed water that's going into North Bay, so it doesn't overtopple bulkheads that they can't replace any longer, and all those kind of things, right? Um, I think that we need to pay some attention to that uh, that problem. I think it was their high end was six and a half million dollars, uh, and their medium end with, with just curbing and stormwater collection three. I think it's way underestimated, but. Um, you know, if we're talking about those kind of things, uh, it's doable. Mm -hmm. It's just going to take a huge, ad, I mean, push from all of us yeah. and prioritize it. If we're going to do that, that's going to that be all, our our big ask. I mean, we'd we'd have to say that's what we're asking for. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be able to ask for a lot more. Yeah. And a lot of conversation with the commercial front. Because that's been a challenge in Hoodsport as well. Just simple things like yeah. well, crosswalks and where do we place them so that we can get pedestrians around but not affect or impact businesses. Yeah. I wrote on here too, and I don't want to delay because it's, it's off topic, but I mean, the, the, obviously we have a monumental septic issue in Hoodsport. And yes. because we're starting, so obviously we're going to have to address that at yes. some point. It's, it's also, you know, which through the study I did last year, you know, finding out that, you know, the, the failing temporary bathrooms or the bathrooms that were, you know, hooked to the septic, those are actually DOT land. That's DOT property that mm -hmm. the easement is. So that's a, in, you know, it's it's significant. And I, you know, being everybody being aware that there is a treatment facility out there, if I'm not mistaken, owned by the tribe, is that yes, correct, correct? Above yep. Spy yes. Lodge? Yes. That's what I was going to tell you. There's history wise, there was at one point an agreement to work together. This was before I came in. Mm -hmm. and there yep. was personal issues that had occurred that separated that. But it makes sense to revisit that together, especially if that was to help offset some of their costs. We help a little bit too. Uh, I'm only speaking for myself, not the other commission. I don't care if I have ownership uh, as long as it gets done because we know that it is an absolute failure in the area we're talking about. And every year when it floods, it's gonna happen again yeah. because the water table is just too high for where the septics are. Sure. Yeah. There's just no way around that. So getting it done is, there should be salmon money and everything for that. But it, yeah, there might be. But it's again, it's it's a challenge because you're you know it, extraordinary cost to service a very small number. Yeah. Because you know, it's not going to service <laughs> Cushman, right? It's yeah. not going to go exactly. up. Exactly. But it's not so extraordinary if we utilize their system and pipe it. True. True. It's extraordinary True. to create one, but maybe it's time to re put together those relationships. Yeah. Uh, but you're pushing it. You'd be pushing it uphill. Yeah, yeah. It would be a pressure You'd system have yeah. the whole way. But I want to remind you, there's two different types of pressure systems. There's the big ones that we use that is half gravity, half pressure. But there's also pressure systems that are much cheaper. Now, we don't make many of you, but something is better than nothing. <laughs> well, there's more to it because you have, have grinders and stuff like that, and they think that the shelf life is not as long. Uh, look at Allen, for example. But at the same time, having it, it's so much cheaper to put that in. You can almost put it in with a ditch wish type thing. In order to get the pressure. Yeah, I didn't want to be off topic, it's but it's I know it's going to be an issue because you yeah. know, we're getting quite a few significant, you know, significant yeah. being, you know, a dozen or so, you know, people in the area, especially your, your businesses, you know, mm -hmm. people that open businesses knowing the system, but get us a system, well, don't open your, right. well, don't recommend you have, opening it yet. Yeah, I think you have new new port members also, Yep. which which I'm, I, I'm very happy that they've got them because they, they <coughs> do have a focus and they do have a desire. So I think by working with all of us, 
I mean, yeah. all of us. And that's going to be a major that. ask in the capital budget as well as for the docking systems in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Well, that cap, that, yes, go ahead. Quick question. You mentioned the declining um, gas tax revenue. Now that we have Climate Commitment Act dollars, some of it's mandated to go to transportation. There's a bucket in capital. What kinds of projects might qualify for Climate Commitment Act dollars? Because we know that that revenue is in better shape than we were anticipating. Well, I mean, uh, again, they have a lot of money and they want to spend it. Um, they want to use it on green control systems. So the hybridization of our ferry vessels, they're bonding against that money right now. So that's one of the biggest. Um, and then they got to figure out how they're going to fuel uh, and uh, these uh, vessels. Um, and are they going to be shoreline charged um, to top off the batteries? And we think that's exactly what they're going to come up with. But they're in reinventing a new ferry, basically, um, on old ferry chassis. Right. Um, and they're doing a demonstration uh, for that. Um, I think um, they're going to say it's all committed. Um, our argument will always be, no, we should constitutionally protect that to go to transportation uh, green projects. And we say that those green projects can be, you know, less miles traveled by building a road through something or a bridge over something, and then there would be less carbon uh, admitted. We're losing that argument. Um, but the gas tax that we are able to do member projects on and get the intersections and that stuff that the county is interested in, um, they're, they're, the majority party has pretty much had the climate commitment tax money revenues put into one bucket, and it, it's not supplementing projects. transportation that much. Now, we've got a couple bill ideas on it. Yeah, and I'll just add that, you know, our caucus's position is that, uh, especially with the excess revenues um, from the carbon auctions, that we're, we're interested in a rebate back to people yep. um, kind of type of program. And so there'll be more on that later. But if people, from our perspective, any of those excess revenues that weren't, you know, kind of planned for, uh, those should go back to uh, taxpayers. And so, some of the discussions, uh, Senator McEwen just had a debate with Senator Wynn on TVW earlier this week. It actually aired to stay Friday. Mm -hmm. it, it either aired <laughs> yesterday or tomorrow. Already. So I'll send you the links. It's pretty interesting. On your sewer go aspect, back it. over there, I want to remind you, you actually have another partner that can go after a different type of dollar than we can. We can all partner together, but the port out there, the ports port. have the authority and, and the uh, ability to do sewage. I was port commissioner for six years, and there's different pockets that we get to go after, but you might be able to partner That's a good reminder. Well. And that was the initial partnership, well, correct? It was the port, the tribe, and the and county. The county. And, and the port just retained legal counsel for lobbying work, too. So they're getting way more serious, and they're officially reaching out to us for help. So, uh, again, the problem is it's one bucket. <laughs> and so um, that's why I, I would say convene the groups as much as you can and get it, you know, um, and, and really prioritize because that, you know, they might have to wait two years, but they know that in two years it's their time, right? Mm -hmm. The problem with that, and I definitely wish it would, it, it would work, but I, what I've seen before many, many years ago, the problem that you had is the smaller entities like the ports and stuff got left down, and then they'd always say, well, it, your turn is in two years, and they wouldn't get their turn, and then they would turn on each other. That's why you don't have prioritizations now. Is that all happened all those years ago? Yeah, we got to fix all that stuff. But I'm just telling you the the best way to do it, and the, the real strategic way to do it, is to have a plan, and work together to develop the plan. Um, and if they're ruffled feathers, then you unruffle them. I mean, it, it's a commitment. Well, that's how we did the West Side Alliance. It's yeah. The idea we took care of each other, we sold each other's projects, and then we stood for them when our project was going through. And that's why they all stuck together. So it is possible. That's what we did. But different entities, so but they were actually some of were at that table, though. So yeah. Deb's getting no, itchy. No, no. <laughs> your capital, your capital fund, like let's say North Bay, right? Right. And you've got projects coming down. Some of which, you know, requires purchasing hardware in the future. Is there a plan to maybe? Purchase some of that hardware to, uh, you know, get across some of those future variances. 
like smooth the yeah i gotta purchase a filter um eight years from i'm making something up but yeah. i gotta purchase these filters eight years from now if i buy them now they're a lot cheaper than if i buy them in eight years so some of that we do do the grinder pumps for example absolutely okay. we order a giant batch of them we get a slamming good deal rather than just onesie twosies as they come along the costco of grinder pumps <laughs> all right, right exactly we've been pushing redundancy for the last few years um, but some of the bigger pumps to have it and have it sit on a shelf you have issues with flanges and things Oil. drying out and basically rendering themselves worthless. So They might have to be rebuilt even though they're brand new. <laughs> exactly. New seals. Yeah. And then um, the other thing with some pre-purchases kind of like is just being careful about similar technologies and making sure that technology is still talking with whatever is happening five years down the road. So, yes, great idea and where we can take advantage of that, absolutely. And Richard's not here, but I want to credit him with um, really drilling in and doing as much as humanly possible about being efficient. <laughs> so how do we contain our costs so they're not exponentially growing? How do we make sure that our team is as educated, informed, up to speed, and being efficient in how they're going about performing their work? Um, all of those things add to cost containment, right? And not just ramping up, well, this is the way we've done it forever, and we need to keep on this spending spree for whatever reason. So hats off to Richard and his crew for really drilling in on that, that portion. Um, so it's 2.30. I know that just to get up to Belfair and back is going to be at least an hour, um, well, hour the, and a half. But Beards Cove, well, one also, of the things Mark I don't was know. Just asking about, Mark was just talking about whether or not, this has been fantastic. Yes. And he was the one supposed to say, to say and talk to you about what I'm about to say. <laughs> gone for a moment. Uh, is there something that you actually want to see? Yes. Or are we at the point to where... Yo, this was even Why don't better. we go see North Bay? Because then we don't have to drive anywhere else. I mean, uh -huh. if you if you want to show one off, I mean, I've seen North Bay a thousand times. If I and I usually stand around BS with the guy that's running it, so I, <laughs> no, I, I, I <laughs> or that's or what Belfair, I do. Right. right. Awesome. Um, but we are peak Belfair traffic times. So. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm gonna hang back because I'm not in Belfair. I'll hang back, but that's. I, I, I don't need a, a, a site tour. I, I do trust my electeds, and I trust what you guys are doing. Um, I don't really need one either. So if, it, if it's all the better to you guys. I, I think you see more today. I, you, know, you guys know I watch your eyes. So I, I, you took in more today than I've ever seen anybody taking such a horrible subject. <laughs> Not worth holding yeah, Horrible now. subject. The, yeah, well, <laughs> the conversation was great. I think that's all the things we needed to talk about. and. Um, I'll just awesome. hijack Randy someday if I need to go see Belfair Sewer or something, or Dan if I need it's to see It's open, usually. <laughs> yeah. the, the gate's yeah. never locked anymore. You can just drive, we could drive up there and I can show That's it. Right. I think I take away so as cool. much as you guys it is today. So cool. I appreciate yeah. your time and, and how you explain some of the stuff to us. I, yeah. I have a different understanding and I'm very thankful. I very much appreciate the time today. Thank you. Up north. Well, it's right. while you were gone. Oh, okay. So she started Yeah, we can bag the site tour. Right. That's right. Everybody's ready for Oyster Fest, right? I've seen I'll be there on Sunday. Saturday's Pee Wee football day all day. Oh, no. My boy's nine. Awesome. Just one, I was just telling Deb, one thing, too, that for all of you, and it, you know, it's taken me, you know, many years to learn, too. The earlier they come in, the better it's because there's often other funding sources outside of the capital. Yes. Yeah. Especially when it comes to like housing things, like you know, roofs for things. You know, you know, the Department of Commerce, you know, basically sends out those applications open in the summer, yeah. right? You know, for you know our entities that are on the, you know, that people like myself that work there don't know it, but our staffers are so, you know, I'll send it to one of our policy and they say, you know what they should do is look at this instead of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's you know opportunities there as well. I have sent you guys um, mm -hmm. some like 
upcoming commerce grants and yes. stuff. Yes. If that's, that's helpful great. to you, I'll keep yeah. doing yeah, it. Yeah, Absolutely. Help. All information is helpful to me. The EV charge limitations. I mean, are, mostly yeah. the ones I think you'd be interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Any of our county facilities. Yeah, that's really you probably get yeah, this. Yeah, how many? Zero. Zero. I've asked our facility staff and, and facilities manager to say, to, to look into that, say, We've got to get something. It's complex. Isn't Transit it? is shifting over. There's new stuff for that rapid charging that's coming on so strong that we don't even know what tomorrow's going to hold for that. And then I think they're going to scrap all of it in 10 years, and we're going to all be driving hydrogen cars. And so I think I it's agree. all for naught. But yeah. no, uh, I get that. I, I feel I feel, <laughs> I feel the same way about uh, our internet, the way we're handling the internet. Right it's now. all going to be wireless. All this money, and yeah. Well, you know, the, there's a. You guys will see it pretty soon, but we got a policy report out about a week ago about the charging stations. That you know, if if only 25 or 25 or 30 percent of the cars go to fully, and you need fast charging, a fueling station has to be over a football field oh in size yeah. because the, because the average car go you, you know when you go fill up your gas you know in your car the average persons are like eight minutes right well if you have to be there for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden it quadruples the number of cars oh, have to wow. be in there. You know, things you don't think about. We simply yeah. do not generate enough power and not yeah. enough reliable yeah. power. I mean, we have a hard time just passing a bill that says we want to study brownouts. Mm -hmm. right? Talk to the so so I mean, man. <laughs> instead of changing everybody over to pay per mile, why don't you just make the battery people oh. pay per mile? We, trust, uh, trust us, if we, if we got to where the majority party had to have a pay for mile, that is our pivot. So, okay. definitely. We're just like, no to pay yeah. for mile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a natural beginning anyway, right? Because gas taxes are bonded for 30 years. Yep. And in order to just transition from something, what people in this state want is not two taxes at well, the same time. But if you bond it for 30 years, mm -hmm. how do you make that cutoff? Well, you have to start with EVs. A lot of people don't know. I mean, you probably do. But EV drivers do pay lieu, in lieu of uh, mm -hmm. gas tax, yeah. right, uh, when they license their vehicle every calendar year. So oh, okay. they actually do pay $150. Carbon committed. Yeah. They pay $150 committed. fee. Uh, and carbon then, tax. Which is also, <laughs> we get nailed with this, the hybrid payers, too. So people that drive yeah. Toyota Priuses also pay the same fee. And they're like, my car's not electric, it's hybrid. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> but it's things you learned that, like you were talking about the gas electric ferries. So the former director of engineering for WashDOT in ferries is now retired, and he went to work for the policy center. Like, we got this great report, like the, the hybrid ferry is great. The, the challenge is they indicate it'll probably burn more fuel because it weighs 16 tons more. Yeah, so, so it displaces more water. Wow. And then the other thing is the ferry, if, if this is true, it's, they're still being engineered. Like when you go through the inlets, they're going to actually have to, so your commute times are going to be longer because they have to slow the boats down because they weigh more. Wow. And Sound, Sound Transit, uh, when they did their first hybridization for their hybrid buses, they were all patting themselves on the back, dislocating their shoulders to do it. At their three and a half miles to the gallon, they were getting with their hybrid buses. But their conventionally powered buses were getting six and a half miles to the gallon. <laughs> so um, I find that, so, that it's a religion that we're dealing with instead of real policy. If we, if we directly reduce carbon, and that was our, our real push, and not a religious uh, embracing of ideas, we do a lot, and probably with a lot less money. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, what happened is the federal government got all behind an easy thing. It looks good. It looks like we're doing something for the environment, so we're going to put all this money into hybridization. Hybridization rapes the world of rare earth mineral, minerals. We're paying kids you know, a cent an hour to, to break... Uh, you know, in mud puddles to break stones into little stones with big stones. Um, and they're going to scrap it. I can just about guarantee you, because this year um, Honda is going to release, uh, Toyota, excuse me, is going to release their first commercially available car that is powered fully by hydrogen. And they're going to prove the concept, and everybody's going to be like, woo, new shiny thing, and we're going to put all this money into all of this. <laughs> and then they're going to be like, well, now what we got to do is we got to put hydrogenators in everywhere. <laughs> um, but then they're going to have to accept small yield uh, nuclear reactors because it's the only real way to split the atom to make it economically small, efficient. Small yeah, um, right, I know. So, <laughs> I, I mean, well, I, 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 so well, and it works. I mean, they're flying hydrogen planes in Moses Lake as we speak. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I think it was like in Canada. It was the 
that other yeah. 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 That's a fast investor right here. You're talking about like sixty-seven billion dollars, but it was in this area that indigenous people were in. You know, pristine. What do they call it? The they call it a pristine a little slightly reserve. Off. Yeah, it's like yeah. a reserve. Yeah. 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 Right. But underneath there, there's 67 so. billion worth of rare minerals we need to go get to make our batteries. <laughs> That they can't the good and bad thing. Of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the good and the bad thing about U.S. citizens is we are impatient. I mean, and, I, and that means sometimes we do good, great things, look at World War II and those kind of things. But when we're really too impatient, we drive the narrative instead of letting the innovators drive the narrative. And I believe that is what's happening with our battery um, switchover and our hybridization. Um, we're literally wasting trillions of dollars, I mean, worldwide, doing something that I believe everyone's going to come back and say, you're driving one of those dirty battery cars, how dare you? Have you ever seen one catch on fire? Oh, all the time. Oh I was fighting a fire at Mason Transit when that happened, so yeah. Yeah. And you know what the, the, the manufacturer said we were supposed to do to fix it? Because you can't put it out with water. No, you let it go. We had to hook onto it with a chain and rip it out of the bus. It was designed to break away, so we put... You know, hose stream on the firefighter hooked up two cables to it and ripped it out with the fire truck. Let it burn till it stopped. <laughs> and it ruined the road. And yeah, well, I mean, well, that's the problem. Yeah. It's just what we could do. <laughs> I hate to admit it, I'm as shallow as this, but for the last, what, five days, six days, I drive a minivan. Everybody knows that, and, except for my motorcycle. But uh, I jumped in my son's truck with a big V8 and that feeling and that power. I didn't want to give it back, man. No. <laughs> I grew up with those. That's why I drove all the time until I got my first caravan. And man, I want to go back. <laughs> I didn't want to give back keys. That's awesome. I'll never. Until go back you fill it trip. up. Yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, yeah. you know what? The funny thing about that stuff, even with the V8, it's still not that bad. Not as bad as. But well, you remember the last one I probably had was an old miles, Dodge or yeah. something. Yeah, I got six to eight miles to the gallon. <laughs> eight miles on the highway. That's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that Toyota Sequoia drove. My wife keeps saying, "Won't you go get a new car?" I said, "No." I mean, I, I think this weekend it will actually roll over three hundred thousand miles. <laughs> You're I just trying it. to see how many miles you can get on. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> wanting to be part of that Toyota club. You know, you hit the four hundred. You know, my my diesel truck has two hundred seventy-five thousand. I just oh, yeah. run until the wheels fall off. Yeah. My old Dodge Caravan that uh, so I still kept even after my wife. <laughs> Maybe get this one, which is still only in 2010 because I refuse to go. But my old one has 350,000 miles, awesome. and I gave it to the guy down there at uh, at Nita's, a uh, hippie. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's driving that thing all over the place, and it runs <laughs> great, drives great. You know, you can consider no payments for all those years. Well, didn't you used to be a used car salesman anyway? Yep, I had a car lot car many lot, years yeah. ago, yeah. I started for a friend, you come to the thief, and I ended up with a car lot I never wanted. <laughs> It was called My Friend's Car Lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was called. Honestly. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. We'll get Rob a capital budget request for a new car because we know he'll make it last 30 yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, right. thank you so much. Great. Yeah. 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 Let's thank just, you. Let's just stay right. in touch, really. Well, I mean, the, that's the hard thing to do, but let's just do it. Yeah, it's not that all hard. Well, all right, Deb, you us. About getting our stuff turned in. We see her all the time. Stuff. We really appreciate your time. Deb's wondering why you don't have it right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Deb's right now. I'm going to get on Monday, I guarantee you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, we need to be ready. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. You're welcome. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it.